Sunday the 29th of March 2020. I'm going to do another quick run through of some of the gold and macro charts. I know there's a bit of interest in this at the moment given the sort of volatility and fluid nature of the market and a lot of news flow and, uh, and that's really affecting some of the macro charts in particular. So I thought I'd, I'd do a bit of an update on the standard sort of chart pack that I normally go through. First one obviously is the gold price. Last week on the uh, on the close it was about just under 1500 and then obviously we've had a really good week this week up about 130 bucks and closed nearish the highs to the week now i think the some of the charts are a little bit uh strange there's been some discrepancies in some of the gold prices on the futures and the spot prices i think this is due from what i've read this is due to some of the refineries in switzerland uh, shutting due to the coronavirus and that's uh, causing some sort of sort of bottlenecks in the uh, supply chain and causing some sort of uh, some gaps to open up between different between different prices in different markets so uh, in particular I think the uh, you know that some of the spot prices I saw this week I think were above 1650 on Tuesday when it, after the good run it had so you know that's I think those premiums tended to sort of close toward the end of the week but there's a little bit of chat that this is indicative of you know a real sort of increase in demand but it's hard to know how much of it is due to increase in demand and how much is due to those sort of short-term bottlenecks in the supply chain the action on monday and tuesday was really supported by the fed's announcement to go to a unlimited qe and this is uh you know i think a, a game changer for the gold price i'm not sure if this was expected in the gold market as much you know i think you think that everyone thought the fed would come out with a, a bigger a bigger um checkbook or a bigger printing press and they've they've come out with the biggest effectively saying that you know they're unlimited so i think in the last video i showed the uh the fed balance sheet and it was uh 4.7 billion at the end of 4.7 trillion sorry at the end of last week and the predictions were for it to go above 5 trillion this week and it's it's almost hit 5.3. I think it was a $600 billion move in the space of one week. You know, in QE3 for, for context was about, I think it was $80 billion a month. So we just had, we just had eight months worth of QE3 in this week alone. Uh, so that, that shows you just how much money is coming in from the Fed. Obviously there was also the, the stimulus from the US government as well for another 2 trillion. So, you know, there's, unlimited firepower there and it should this should, this sort of price action this sort of a new should be extremely positive for gold in the in the medium term i think we're seeing potentially toward the, if we start to see the sell off in uh, other markets and whether that sparks these sort of margin calls and, and so forth in in gold uh, but even even on friday when markets tended to sell off around the world the the gold price held pretty pretty well toward the top of the move for the week so I'm cautious that we might have seen a bit of a, a bit of a bottom here, but I think you know maybe that that we'd go back to test near those lows, but I just don't see it heading much lower in the in the short term with this tailwind of of the uh, the Fed sitting there. The uh, dollar index was an interesting one this week as well, and I, if you remember last week, I really talked about how I think the Fed and the U.S. government really can't have the dollar being being this high because it had that surge due to that sort of safe haven bid or that perceived safe haven of, of US dollars and liquidity. And then, you know, this week it's it's plummeted down to sort of uh, 5% or more on the dollar index. And I think I read the the pound had its best move ever against the best weekly move ever against the dollar, for example. So extreme volatility. Australian dollar was also up strongly, probably at least 7%, I think, for the week. Also probably close to a, an all-time high move, I would say. I'll show that in a second. But the question is now whether this this can trend continues, or we start to see that that uh, dollar dollar spike again if if markets sell off and there's that bid for uh, safe haven asset of U.S. dollar cash. So I think we might see the the dollar index again strengthen, and that would cause the uh, Australian dollar and some of the other currencies to roll over again. Uh, you know, this is it's all about the dollar at this point. I don't think the currencies are necessarily trading on their own fundamentals so much australian obviously is a i might talk about it now that the australian dollar is a risk currency so you know when there's a when markets start rallying you know you should expect the australian dollar to move up and that's what we saw this week uh, and so 
you know, it's bounced probably <clears throat> bounced higher than I expected. I was looking for probably about 60 for it to sort of top out, but uh, it's gone almost hit 62 on on Friday night. So, you know, we're back up toward the the, the previous lows in uh, that we had in 2008. You know, so it sort of broke through there with a with a hurry, and uh, and now it's sort of come back and testing that range. I think I think it goes lower again. I just don't see how the Australian dollar is not not a currency to own in this situation with with worldwide demand problems, commodities under pressure, Australian economy itself with a lot of uh, problems, which are probably not really being shown in the currency yet. But I think if those if they start to come to the fore with this sort of second and third order effects. That's that's a big issue, uh, like I've, I've spoken about before. I think the Australian economy is, has a, a soft underbelly. At the moment, we've really seen the primary effects of this that have hit sort of frontline, you know, travel workers and, and flights, and uh, you know, and now in retail and and um, shops shutting and cafes and whatever. I think after that's where if you start seeing the second and tertiary effects, where it starts to affect property prices and landlords and all this sort of stuff. That's where the real problems are for the Australian economy, just because of the huge debt load from a consumer point of view. So you know, now we're talking, uh, you know, wage subsidies and stuff are the story today, like they've done in the UK. Uh, so that's that's sort of something to watch out for. But I, at the end of this, I don't see how the Australian dollar recovers. I mean, I think there's going to be that. Like I said, I expect the over the medium term, the US dollar index probably to weaken uh, as that you know Fed so is effectively uh, in you know, inflating the value of the of the US dollar, but the Australian dollar is just doesn't have much going for it at the moment. I I think this trend of of a lower Australian dollar continues. I don't see this as a turning point at all. It's just a short term a short term blip in a in a longer term downtrend that hasn't seen the the lows yet. So putting those all to, all together, the Australian dollar gold price had another all time high weekly close. Remember last week I saw these sort of tweezer top at about 2700. I thought maybe that's a um, it did actually this this chart is only is a day behind. It's not showing Friday there for some reason. It did come back, I think, to about a 2630, 2640 price level uh, this week at the end of the, on Friday with the Australian dollar strengthening heavily, uh, a couple of cents. So that that pulled it back toward the uh, that below that 2700 level, but still an all-time high weekly close again. And uh, it, the trend does look. Pretty positive here. I just, I just don't see what's, what's going to stop the Australian dollar gold price heading higher. With that, the Australian dollar current, Australian currency really just uh, probably the, one of the weaker amongst all world currencies, and, and the gold price strengthening against everything really. Uh, and I think we'll continue to strengthen against US dollars. So I'm pretty, still pretty bullish on this, and that's why I'm still playing Australian dollar gold miners. Uh, you know, I, I did a couple of videos on that this week. Um, uh, on the main sort of mid cap names, if you want to have a look at that one, the S and P 500 came back. Remember the last video I was speaking about this Trump breakout move and whether we could retest that. We did, we did get uh, so that that's this little dash line here around 2150 was the Trump uh, election victory. So I um, I uh, thought we might get there. We almost did on on Monday before it rallied strongly. Uh, so whether that's an ultimate low, often with these things you see sort of a big short-term low and then perhaps sort of a rounded bottom that comes nearish to this this uh, initial bottom. But I don't think the S&P 500 is real. There's not a lot of fear at the moment, and I think the uh, you know the market hasn't fully baked in all the all the problems that are going to be caused economically by the coronavirus. As well as from a health perspective and the, the burden on the U.S. economy, uh, so that's uh, I'm still I'm still expecting that this to roll over. Friday action was pretty pretty negative, big big uh, upper wick there, closing lower. Uh, and I, I saw this article, I saw a couple of articles about the you know this being the shortest uh, shortest bear market ever and the bull markets on. I mean I find this this definition of a a um, bear market to be Pretty annoying. They they say it's traditional this 20% figure. I don't think that was originally what was ever intended when people described a bear market. They they put this 20% figure. It somehow got this legs and now it's with the market had fallen more than 20% in, and you know it was a, a 
short, sharp bear market, and then it's rallied 20% off the lows. Now we're in a bull market again, which is just ridiculous. Uh, I expect this to roll over again, but the fact that people even say we're in a bull market again shows you that there's not that sort of despondency and fear that you would expect to see at, at an ultimate low after a, a big plummet like this. You know, and what we saw in 2008 was something like I was just describing, and it's, you know, we had this the sharp lows sort of probably into uh, October, November period, and then the more gradual sell-off into into March before the ultimate low. So, you know, I think from a fear perspective, we're probably at that, you know, Lehman Brothers type and, uh, you know, real bailout moment for the US economy, which was in that October period after the Lehman failure in September. You know, so I think this has still got a ways to go. I think we've probably compressed some of what happened in 2008. Really what might have taken three to three or four months has really happened in the space of one month. So I, I expect um, the market hasn't seen the, uh, the end of this yet, whether it goes back and still goes lower than this 2180 or whatever it got to the other day. I'm not really sure, but uh, I'm, I still think this, the, the market's still got a long way to go if it's going to bit of a feel, form a bit of a base here. I don't see why there'd be a V-shaped recovery. I mean, I think the, there's still a belief that this, uh, or a misunderstanding of why this has been such a sharp sell-off. It was, it's such a sharp sell-off because of the run that had earlier, like earlier in 2019, this was all artificial. That was just multiple expansion, not based on extra profitability and strength of the US economy, sort of for, uh, fooling people into believe that this was a, you know, organically driven market when in, in reality it's driven by buybacks and debt and, and these sort of things. And that's a lot of what I've been saying for a long time in these videos. I didn't expect this, but I, I've still thought for whole, that whole time, I thought that market was just rallying on fumes and at some point it was going to uh, flame out. So that's what we've seen. Like I said, I still think we've got uh, a few months of, of down at these levels. Maybe we start to see a bit of bouncing around, but who knows? I just don't the de market definitely hasn't bottomed in the sense that I expect it to rally strongly from here, even with that Fed stimulus. ASX 200, I'll just look at that quickly. It uh, it had its bounce as well. I think probably almost up 20% from the lows to the high on on Friday, but then a, a really bad candle on Friday, big engulfing, big intraday high of around 22.30 there, and then closing at the lows. So, you know, almost a 400 point, turnaround from the intraday high which is huge so pretty pretty negative price action there um, you know I, I, it's sort of negative on multiple fronts the market obviously we've got commodity producers under pressure you've got bank stocks under big pressure as well I'm not sure how much of that starting to you know people starting to worry about defaults and these sort of things obviously the government's gonna have to bail these banks out if, if, if they get too many issues but uh, I you know, there's this hard to find a strong sector of the market at the moment, maybe healthcare or something like that. But, um, you know, again, the market's selling off hard because it had run so hard in the in the year up to this on for no real reason uh, other than sort of hope and uh, of a, you know, and getting to all time highs again and suckering a lot of people in. Uh, you know, I don't think we've seen the bottom here. And I think maybe the ASX goes is, is sort of probably going to underperform the S&P 500 from here as well, judging by the, you know, I'm not sure if the, the market is as well supported in Australia. The Reserve Bank isn't sort of propping up the share market in the same way that it is in America, the, the Federal Reserve in, is, is in America. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm pretty bearish on the ASX still. I don't think we've seen anywhere near the lows here. And we need to see a lot more uh, people start to, like I said, get despondent and fearful of the market, and that's probably when you're going to see your low. Some of the uh, indices for the gold stocks, GDX, bounced up nicely the last few weeks to really test that range. Again, you know, I, I, I spoke about this in that, that video where I talked about the GDX and GDXJ and some of the volatility that was causing in the broader gold market. You know, they're up. This, the index, index was up sort of 60% from the low within the space of two weeks, which shows you just how, I think, broken these uh, ETFs are and sort of the illiquidity that was causing issues. It's failed at that to break above that 26 level and had a pretty reasonably hefty sell down the last couple of days. I think the 
probably judging by this and looking at the GDXJ chart as well, the uh, bigger miners are probably outperforming, uh, which is probably a good sign. The juniors are off, you know, probably more like 20% there from that, uh, 18 to 20% from the 35, 36 levels down to 29.90 there. GDX probably closer to its highs for the week and probably rallied better off the low. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is... Uh, the, the bigger miners are rallying, which probably shows a bit of institutional money going in there and looking for that bidding gold. Obviously, the gold price has been holding up pretty well. So to see the a lot of the mid cap names off by you know five to ten percent on on Friday in Australia and Canada was a little bit surprising. But they're trading as equities as they have in the last uh, when you know the market turned down the first time. But I think at some point that battle where they're, they're trading as you know, gold, uh, plays on the gold price or play, you know, just general uh, equities. I think we're at some point soon, they're going to start to trade with the gold price more. Uh, so this short term, I think probably represents a bit of an opportunity if we start to see the gold price stay where it is and the gold equity still selling off. Looks like gold wants to move higher, in my, my opinion. That chart is, you know, I'm obviously a gold bull in general, but this chart looks pretty good off the lows here. Rallied very strongly, holding the nice... The nice highs there for the last couple of days, so I'm I'm pretty bullish on that, and I think that the miners ultimately will catch up. But you know, in the meantime, it's it's opportunity that I, I think. Uh, so that that's probably a good good way to end it on the uh, the gold and the the macro charts. Uh, it'd be another interesting week. Uh, obviously, I've got another video I put up today on the uh, ASX miners. Uh, this is a free video, for, by the way, and if you're if you're interested in in joining the Patreon channel, I'll put the link in the in the YouTube um, description. Uh, I think it's 29th of March today, so uh, just a reminder that the it charges if you join the Patreon page, it charges you on when you sign up and on the first of the month immediately after that. So you might want to hold off signing up until uh, until Wednesday when it's the 1st of April and there's no, uh, you only get charged for that starting at that point. So that's, uh, that's probably enough from me and uh, have a good week. Thanks very much.